Also in the NHC, a good game, New Haven against Homestead. These are teams that are 4-2 and two in conference. They won't factor into a conference championship, but a good matchup nonetheless as far as the talent goes. New Haven, I, I, I think that they're the most underrated team in our area because of the way that they've lost games. They've, they've had the Norwell syndrome a little bit, right. not being able to close it out, uh, unfortunately for them, the loss to Carroll in overtime at their place, and then this past week giving up the, the 99-yard drive right at the end of the game uh, to East Noble to lose by four. But if you're New Haven, this could be a good confidence boost heading into the postseason. Yeah, no doubt. They made, uh, I, I think, I, I don't know if it's a permanent change or not with Keyshawn Moore, a quarterback, last week. He was really gives that dimension to the New Haven's offense of, a legitimate dual threat quarterback and a dual threat guy that Vance Shearer really didn't give them. And I think, you know, Shearer, they really had trouble offensively at times this year. Now they get Keyshawn Moore, who um, is a dynamic player, can get the outside of the box and run and throw on the run. And But he was only a sophomore, so he's going to have some growing pains as well. But uh, when Keyshawn Moore was on last week and you have Nishan Jones in the backfield, mm-hmm. I think it's just a, a much different offense to defend for for uh, for defenses against New Haven, it's kind of a wrinkle that we haven't seen in a while with New Haven in terms of a running quarterback. When you take a look at what Homestead is able to do, last week on paper it looks really good: 48-14 against Norwell at home. Logan Ormsby, 338, three touchdowns. I was there for you know, the third quarter and and some of the fourth quarter. That's a game where they had the ball multiple times within the 15 in the third quarter, settled for two field goals and a missed field goal. Against a team that's tougher that they're going to face as far as the 6A playoffs, you can't be giving away points in terms of, in terms of not being yeah. able to finish in the red zone. How do you fix that? You know, the interesting stat that jumped out of me is, is Homestead has two, 12 points, averaging 12 points a game against teams over 500 and 38 against teams under 500 right now. And, you know, you can look at that and say, well, it doesn't mean much or it means a lot. We really don't know. But it is an interesting stat in the fact that truly tough teams, the Carroll and East Noble that they've played that are over 500, have kept them to 12 points a game. So, you know, is Homestead a, a offense that can put up points against the weaker weaker teams and can't put up points against the tougher teams? I, I really don't know. Maybe we have to, may have to wait till this week and, and into the playoffs to find out, but it is definitely an interesting stat that jumped out to me. And I know a lot of people around the NHC wondering uh, how East Noble's Dylan Fuller is doing. Do you have any update on uh, where he is at physically? I haven't heard anything. You know, Friday, you know, Coach, uh, you said everything looked normal and, and stuff like that. You know, with that, it looks scary. You're just hoping it's precautionary. You're mm-hmm. keeping his helmet on and everything. So I know it was a scary moment for everybody, uh, especially the kind of kid that Fuller is and the kind of leader. But East Noble really reacted to it well, kind of uh, banded together and won that game. So, um but uh, definitely keep an eye on, what, on how Dylan's doing, definitely. And East Noble still has a chance for conference championship this week. They battle Belmont, uh, only one loss in conference. Uh, if Carroll slips up, they, they slide East Noble right could there, be man. right there with yeah. Harold B. Wolf. Yeah, and that's a game that uh, that Carroll-East Noble game that you know they get, East Noble gets inside the 15 and, and, and Bryce Wolf gets hurt and goes out. And, uh, you know, they put the freshman in, a really talented freshman and quarterback who's going to be really good for East Noble, but uh, kind of throwing a freshman into the fire right there and, and couldn't pull it out. So uh, that was a game that went down to the end, one of the many games that Carroll's pulled out <laughs> late, you know, that they have, they have this year. And East Noble-Belmont, I mean, that's not, you know, record-wise, it looks like it should be East Noble's, but I'll tell you what, those are two teams that know for their line play, both like to run the football, the roughneck style football. Yeah. I mean, that could be a good one on Friday. It's like that team that slips under the radar all the time. We never hardly ever talk about them, but they're just, you know, they're 4-4 four and four sitting there. They can, they can scare anybody. They're always a dangerous team when it comes close to playoff time because yeah. when they start playing schools their own size, you realize how well the NHC has prepared them for a postseason yeah. run. Yeah, no doubt. Definitely. All right. So it's week nine. The season, as far as the regular season, will wrap up on Friday, and then we'll be talking playoffs next Monday here on Inside the Zone. But for now, he's Justin. I'm Glenn, and we'll see you next week.